All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and it is then posted to our website for people to watch at their convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our um, show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, we do uh, quite a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. The Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in the state. And that is public, academic, K-12 schools, museums, uh, correction facilities, uh, anything that's a library, we are um, the agency for them. So our topics will cover all those types of libraries and anything going on in them as well. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on the show book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of products and services, um, basically anything that we think may be um, useful or interesting interesting to libraries and library staff. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations for us, which are um, things that we are doing through the Library Commission, things specific to um, what we're um, providing here. Uh, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have um, this morning. Um, on the line with us remotely from just up the high up I-80 a bit here from um, Omaha is uh, Claire uh, Chamley. Claire, hello. Hello. There and Aaron Painter, who are both from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. So they're joining us remotely from Omaha. I'm in Lincoln, for those of you not knowing where we are all here in Nebraska. <laughs> um, and they are both, um, you're both associated with the, with the Chris Library, I think, or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, oh yeah, your title's right there on the screen too. Yeah, because I wasn't sure about the the whole connection with um, the what you were doing, Erin. If it was still related to. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Creativity Library is a branch library of the UNO Libraries. Um, it's uh, downtown at Kaneko Art Gallery, so it's a partnership right, yeah. with gallery and UNO. Okay. Cool. Space. Yeah. Um, and we're there to talk to us today um, about today is um, this is a presentation that was done originally at our state library conference that was held last fall. Um, but it's, uh, I think, a very important topic. So I wanted to broaden the reach of what you guys talked about um, information literacy and um, for our ESL and ELL students, um, alleviating their library anxiety. I think lots of us have library anxiety, <laughs> um, and we're going to specifically talk about them today. So um, I'll just hand it over to you guys to take it over and uh, do your presentation. Great. Okay. Um, I'm Claire Chamley, and I'm a reference associate here at Chris Library. Um, and I'm the Creativity Library Manager, like um, Krista said, um, downtown. But I was a reference associate up until very recently, mm -hmm. so we... Um, uh, we're both kind of responsible as part of a team for teaching Comp 2, but also um, ESL students on information literacy and how to do research in the library. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about kind of what we did. It's a, a little hard because at um, at NLA we had an actual active learning activity, which mm -hmm. um, isn't as conducive to the webinar thing. So we're um, we're going to explain kind of what we did and why we did that activity um, and kind of how, how that worked. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so basically what we did with our activity, um, we wanted to kind of give the folks who were there an idea of how our ESL or ELL students might feel as far as library library anxiety is concerned. Um, so, um, so this activity that we did, we picked a role playing game um, called Edge of the Empire, and oh, that that sorry, that mouse is in my way. I don't like where it's at. Um, and we had our we broke everybody into some groups, and we asked them to fill out a character sheet and make a character that would be um, a, a strong, good quality character. Um, and so we let the group know um, 
while they were working on this, they were able to use any sources that they wanted to. So whether that was a group member that had maybe some familiarity with role playing games or the internet or kind of however they wanted to go about doing this and fill out this character sheet correctly. Um, we gave them very little instruction. Yeah, just, we just, just told them to fill it out. this out uh, <laughs> as best you can. And in the picture. So here is a picture of the character sheet. I don't know if you can see it too well. It's um, it's a little bit small. Um, but we do have this if people are interested. Yeah, in, in, yeah. In, yeah. In getting this. Yeah. Um, so basically what we wanted people to do was look at this character sheet without having, we assumed, any knowledge of it, and then make a character that was... Um, well-built, strong, um, you know, a good quality character. Um, so we gave everybody, what, like 10 minutes to mm -hmm. do this? Um, and we asked them to think about, as we're doing this activity, uh, to think about words that they see on here that maybe they have seen the word just, you know, in general, but they might not know what it means in the context of this game. Right. Um, so there are familiar words right um on this character sheet um mm -hmm. that okay we know what we, we're native english speakers claire mm -hmm. and i right we know what melee and brawn and cunning sure. mean but what does it mean in the context right of mm -hmm. building a character and and that was kind of um that was so like for example uh cunning most people probably know what cunning means um, but within this specific character sheet and this specific world, um, cunning has to do with um, how well are you able to survive? How well can you answer information from like a group of people or get, get answers from a group of strangers on the street? Or um, can you lie to people? Um, yeah, bluffing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there is no bluff on this one. That's why. Yeah, so, uh, so depending on if you've played role playing games or not, you might have an idea of what cunning means in this context. Um, but I think for the most part, um, people were pretty, we had a discussion after asking people, um, you know, tell us about your character. Um, what words did you recognize that maybe you didn't understand? And, and it, a lot of people um, came up, they came up with a pretty good list of words that they were like, I, I I know what this means, but I don't know what this means. Um, right. And so we really wanted to, that activity really served as kind of, we wanted to place people in the shoes of our ESL, ELL students when it comes to, maybe you know the word, but you don't understand the context. Mm -hmm. So, um, and kind of show how that anxiety of being thrown into an activity that you maybe don't understand or know how to do can kind of affect the students. Yeah, and in a in a room of of library professionals, right? We're all fairly educated, mm -hmm. and we we make mm -hmm. a point to our education. Um, we asked them how they felt um, yeah. filling out this sheet, and several people were like, "I felt stupid," or "I felt silly," <laughs> or, I didn't know what I was doing. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so it's familiar, but it's not. But I don't know what to do with it in this context. Right? I think that was the biggest thing. Is like, mm -hmm. well, even if I can figure it out, I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right, like you can look up the the meaning of cunning, but yeah. I don't know what that means here. Exactly, I'm not, and I'm not sure if I'm figuring it out correctly. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. I need something about it. I need someone else to inform me about how does Edge of the Empire work. Right, and we even had one person in the group that had played role playing games before, but even she, she was like, I mean, I know how to fill out a character sheet, but I don't. I don't know what to do with this one. So it was interesting right. to see. Yeah, I've done D&D &D character sheets and yeah. various versions of that e e over the years. Um, and it doesn't use the same terminology as the Star Wars one. So exactly. I and might so be able to infer what some of them might be, but I probably am only like halfway there. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So the activity, um, I think that really put everyone in kind of a good headspace. They had that feeling of, what the ESL, ELL students might feel. So, um, are we next yep. slide? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Um, so after the activity, we kind of again talked about how um, everyone kind of felt um, while they were filling this out, right? Um, 
that our, our ESL students and ELL students, while they may have been in a library or um, have known, you know, know what the word research means or know what the word source means, they don't understand how to do that or find that here in the context of, of our academic library. Um, and library anxiety, is something that happens with native speakers, right? Um, it's the same kind of anxiety that you might feel uh, walking into a new social situation where you just don't know um, like the rules, right? Um, you may understand the words, but you don't know all of the mm -hmm. rules. And so it can be very um, uh, anxious making, right? Um, for, for you to encounter those new situations. And when you have the added, um, uh, hurdle of, of language, right, um, where you may understand some words and not some other words um, that can compound that library anxiety that may already be there. Um, and uh, I am actually uh, uh, working on a master's in language teaching with um, a focus in ESL. Um, and so one of the things that we've talked about in our in, in research for second language acquisition is um, noticing and processing and frequency of input. So um, one of the ways that you learn a language, if you don't, if you don't notice the word, right, then you're not going to be able to process that word and understand what it means. So um, input, if you don't know what you're looking for or don't know how to pick out those words that you need, you're not actually processing that and gaining that information. And the more often you hear a word, um, the more often that you encounter the word, the more likely you are to process that word um, and figure out that context. And so um, in order to kind of boost that uh, frequency of input um, and to help them notice the words that we felt were important uh, for them to be able to be successful in conducting research, not just for the paper that they're coming in for, but um, moving forward throughout their academic lives here, like these are words that they're going to um, encounter uh, throughout their academic careers. Um, and so what we decided to do um, for these ESL students that come in um, to get sort of that first exposure to the library, that first exposure to real academic research in an American setting, um, we decided to start out um, with a vocabulary lesson. Um, and we got the words, so we had a, a two-sided worksheet. This is the worksheet that, one side of the worksheet that you see here. Um, and one of them is research vocabulary and the other one was library vocabulary. Um, and we grabbed uh, these uh, off of a corpus of academic vocabulary that I found online. Mm -hmm. um, simple Google search can, can lead you to several very useful, excuse me, um, corpus of academic vocabulary um, and so um, with Claire we kind of worked together to kind of glean out we wanted it to be digestible right so we tried to decide what we're get, what would they encounter more, most often mm -hmm. um, as first vocabulary yeah um, and so you know we worked together we kind of worked with the ESL instructors mm -hmm. too like do you think these vocabulary words are good um, and as a part of the vocabulary um, so we did this exercise right at the beginning. So they're already, you know, going to have this word bank going into their yes. research. Um, and we did the exercise. If you want to talk about the exercise. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we addressed all of all levels of students that we have in our ESL ELL classes. Um, so that may be some students are proficient in speaking the English language, but their writing of the English language is very weak. Sometimes it's vice versa, you know, there are just all sorts of different levels. So we tried to make this activity and all of our activities, but in particular this one, really flexible for any type of learning style. Um, so when we were going over the vocab sheet, um, we make sure to let the students know that they need, they should write down the answers, um, but they can either write it down in English or in their own native language or draw pictures or kind of whatever will help them remember what this word means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this is the research vocabulary. So this is kind of academic language or mm -hmm. what they might, what we're going to talk about when we talk about, you know, types of source, sources and where they're going to find those things um, as far as the databases are concerned. Um, but then we also had this library vocabulary sheet as well. So this ha also has, um, you know, library specific 
uh, vocabulary that they might hear us talk about when we talk about using the library, you know, service desk, yep. librarian, interlibrary loan, interlibrary loan, which, you know, there are some native English, yeah, na American born. A lot of our don't comp know what, classes, honestly, mm -hmm. sometimes these words, they don't know exactly what they mean either. So it's not specific. Library jargon. Our own yeah. jargon. Yeah. <laughs> That's super jargony. So um, breaking it down, I think really, we really wanted to make sure that even if they had questions about these things, that they knew, you know, okay, I know that the service desk is where I get questions answered. So they have at least a general idea of where to go to get help if they need extra help type of thing. Mm -hmm. And we went through each one of these words on both sides um, of the of the vocabulary yep. as a class, kind of as a class discussion. Mm -hmm. um, you would throw out there, does anyone know what you know interlibrary loan is? Right. Um, mm -hmm. And give them time to try to come up with that answer. Mm -hmm. um, but we um, went through and kind of discussed each word and what the context means um, and took a good amount of time to go through this just so they're kind of set up for success when they encounter mm -hmm. those later. Um, based on instructor feedback, we, we also, oh, excuse me, we also have um, this worksheet that goes with the vocabulary sheet mm -hmm. um, and it's like a second kind of exercise um, when they encounter these sources, um, how to evaluate then those sources, which is something that not only ESL or ELL students struggle with, as we all know, um, lots of students, especially now, yeah. struggle with um, evaluating the sources that they find, not just for quality or veracity, but also appropriateness for the paper. Um, the, and this was, uh, so we teach evaluating sources in our Comp 2 classes. So this particular worksheet, um, we took our already made Comp 2 worksheet and kind of broke it down a little bit more. So it's um, simpler, mm -hmm. I guess, to figure out the answers to these questions and to kind of talk about the five W's, which is what we use for um Evaluating. For evaluating, I can't think of the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we made the we we worked with the instructor um, mm -hmm. to make sure that these sentences um, they were, they were much more simple than what we use in our Comp Two classes, mm -hmm. where the majority of students are native English speakers. Um, they're they're a little more straightforward, so that a little less nuanced language um, and things like that, just so it it's really coming and meeting those students where they are exactly, um, and and not having that expectation of them being a native. You know, English speaker um, trying in to make it as, as stress free as, as stress -free possible because they're already probably stressed out from mm -hmm. from being in the library. So, um, and so we also incorporated mm -hmm. um, this kind of hands on activity. So we have the vocabulary right. So they're set up for success. They know that hopefully, and they can always refer back to the mm -hmm. vocabulary or when they encounter those words. Um, we teach them how to evaluate sources and then we get them physically out into the library. Um, and so the class has a group topic, a subject that they can kind of address however they like. And so we would look up um, some books in the library um, that, that pertain to that topic mm -hmm. um, and then put them in pairs or groups of three um, and sent them up into the stacks to actually go find a book in the stacks, you know, kind of in a structured way, get them over that maybe anxiety of exploring the library, right? Or getting lost, they can do that in kind of a safe space. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing, um, and so they, they did enjoy that activity. They did. Actually. They, they all had a really good time. <laughs> and we gave, uh, I think I gave out pins I don't as a reward. Like, not, hey, if you came in first, you know, kind of well, made a race or anything. And it was, it was really interesting to see they would come down and even if they didn't find the book, we still kind of were able to use it as a learning moment, you know, asking, okay, well, if the book says it's up there and it's not, what do you think you should do? Oh. Mm -hmm. And in every, in every single one of my classes, Mine too. at least one or two people immediately said, oh, you go ask someone. Go ask <laughs> That's the service desk. Exactly. Yes, that's what you do. <laughs> you understood what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was... And just getting, I mean, even some of our Comp 2 students, they've never been up on the third floor. I know that some of them also feel that anxiety. So um, 
yeah, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of books up there. Mm -hmm. I get lost up there, you know, and yeah. I work here. <laughs> if you don't know what you're looking for, it's very overwhelming. So mm -hmm. just um, wanted to eliminate that right off the yeah, bat. If we get, get them up there and get them engaging with the library mm -hmm. um, while they, they can feel free to ask questions, right, in that kind of safe space. Um, and what we found, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the instructors, because we did this with a lot of instructor buy-in. Yeah. Um, they were really, really excited about the vocabulary lesson. Um, you know, a lot of them have been through the TESOL certificate and, and the mm -hmm. Masters of Language Teaching and, and understand the kind of theory and research that we grounded this idea of an activity yeah. in. Um, and, and they they thought that, you know, moving forward, even after they left the library, that they understood more about research and, and how to use the library um, than they had in previous semesters mm -hmm. before we did this activity. Um, and then the students, because they understood those words better, right, and understood the context better, um, we were able, they were more engaged in, in the instruction later, like, um, because they, they could understand and engage with that material in a more meaningful way. Right. Um, as opposed to you know, kind of the blank deer in a headlights, mm -hmm. you know, wash of input. Talking about? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but I, well, I also think too, and I've noticed this, this and you, you probably noticed when you were around, around here more, um, that we, or I, I see more students, um, like I'll notice students from an ESL class that I've taught being in the library more. So mm -hmm. working on homework here, working in groups, just hanging out. I think that they, I think that this class also helps them kind of see the library as, as, as a safe place for them to go, a good place for them to hang out, to do their homework, where they know that if they ever need help, there is someone here to help them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is a really important part of this, of this class too, making sure that they know that the library is, not scary. It's not just for research. <laughs> like you can do it here. It's not scary. It's a good place to go. Um, so that's I think that's nice. Well, and them. and some of these students come from um, cultures and, and countries where they're not allowed to go mm -hmm. up into the stacks and find things, right? Oh yeah, it's all yeah, yeah, closed that's, stacks in places. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah librarian and they may or may not be friendly or helpful mm -hmm. um you can't go and engage with the library in the same way that you can right. here and a lot of them don't didn't know that before before you know us sending them like no go get your yes, own book please go do it <laughs> <laughs> and if go get lost it's okay <laughs> we'll find you we'll come beat you up. i'm speaking to that it happened it did happen <laughs> um yeah. yeah we um sent a group up um, and they did get lost. Um, mm -hmm. They, luckily, we kind of knew the approximate ranges that we had sent them to, um, as we all know, Library of Congress and subjects and things like that. So we kind of knew where to go and find them. But a couple <laughs> of groups uh, got lost up there. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to kind of, first of all, we we turned that into a teaching moment yeah. where, oh, if you can't find the book, where do you go? Right? Like we talked about. Um, but also, uh, we in subsequent activities, we set them a time limit. <laughs> it was also a teaching moment for us. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find it, it's no big deal. Yep. You're not in trouble. Right. Come back in five minutes, yeah. please. <laughs> Just try for this long, and then, yeah, you've exhausted all of your skills. That's okay. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, exactly. They were gone for a good 15 I, or 20 one minutes. One of us had to go up to the stacks to go <laughs> kind of grab them and be like, Find come them. back, it's okay. <laughs> so, so as for it being lost, was this just as in, I can't find the book that I've been told to look for, so I'm going to keep, keep looking for the book, or was it, I've lost my way in the building and I don't know how to get back? It, it was the first one. Okay. So okay. this group of students, the call them that we gave them said that the book was checked in. And so when I went up to find them, they were in the exact spot where the book was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the book wasn't there. It wasn't <laughs> on the shelf. They just lost the, okay, what do I do? We've obviously done something wrong. Yeah. So I, they were looking around in the section. I think it, and of course, they were under the impression it was there. We were under the impression it was there. It had been there. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah, it was just in kind of a moment of, and, oh, well, this is 
something that sometimes happens. this does happen yeah um, and we know for experience yep it happens all the time it could be anywhere let's yeah you can <laughs> stop <laughs> in other books <laughs> yeah i found a whole bunch of lost books like that uh -huh. <laughs> um and but that it's it's okay to get lost mm -hmm. it's okay to you know not be able to find the book you're not doing anything wrong you're in the right spot mm -hmm. um you obviously understood our and explanation exactly. of call numbers and right. where it is but you uh, this is also another thing that happens yes, yes. um and uh, we also um, had an interesting uh, experience with wait time, if mm -hmm. you want to talk about wait time. Yeah. Um, so wait time with ESL students, as we kind of found through trial and error. Well, and so, well, first of all, wait time is. is oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So wait time is um, the period of time between the instructor asking a question and waiting to hear the answer from the students. Mm -hmm. um, so in our comp two classes, we often have a pretty decent amount of wait time um, because sometimes it's sometimes they don't know the answer, but a lot of times, in my experience, um, they just they don't really want to engage in class. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know if people have the same experience. Yes, no, they they're there because they have to be. Yeah. Um and that is one thing I that occurs to me now. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these ESL and ELL students are very, very invested in their learning. Incredible. They want to be there. They want to learn this language, right? Um whereas some of our comp two students are like, uh, I have to be I have here. to take comp too, so I have to be here. So I have to go to library week. Mm -hmm. and so that going the motions because they're making me. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so some of that length of wait time is due to uh, say, ob obstinance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as opposed to with the ELL and ESL students. Uh, yeah. And so kind of the the difference with that with the wait time, and I I had to work on this because I hadn't taught. I mean when we first started teaching these ESL classes, Aaron had more experience than I did. So this was kind of something that I I had to work on. Um, but the wait time for the ESL students, it it is it needs to be much shorter than for our typical comp two classes. Because oftentimes with the ESL students, if you ask them a question and they don't know the answer or they're not answering, it's because they don't know the answer, not because they don't want to answer. Mm -hmm. um, and so increasing that wait time just increases anxiety. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and so for me, when I first started teaching the ESL classes, I was kind of treating it the wait time like a comp two class. And um, you know, as time went on, it was kind of a okay. I I understand now that this is a very different class dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. So that too much wait time could end up being more detrimental to the ESL classes because they might, yeah, who knows if in their mind they're thinking, you know, oh, I don't know this, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed, supposed to know, I'm this, supposed to know it and I don't. And I don't yeah. um, whereas um, it's also kind of reading the room too, like sometimes you can tell in COP2 if, you know, like I said, if students know the answer and they just don't want to answer versus in ESL classes, a lot of times you kind of are met with deer in the headlight mm -hmm. looks, mm -hmm. um, which is fine, mm -hmm. like, if you don't know, you don't know. Um, so that but for me, generally, if you know what their attitude stereotypically mm -hmm. will be coming in, you can realize, oh, this is what's happening and what I need to, how I need to adjust as the instructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which you know takes some practice on our part, mm -hmm. and and we're lucky actually um, that our ESL instructors are also very engaged. Yes, with with these activities and with these sessions um, mm -hmm. so you know and because they have so much experience right mm -hmm. with this class and these students but also in general with the with the field um, they they've been also been invaluable to us oh, you know helping us so great. tweak these timings and things like that you know um, we, we always talked with them after class mm -hmm. you know and that's how we figured out about the wait time we did a little research into that we too. Did, yeah um, that wait time is kind of one of those tight ropes that you walk as an instructor, mm -hmm. you know, where is that, okay, I'm gonna wait for the answer, you know, because you want them to work through it, right? You want them to kind of come to those answers on their own, or am I just creating more anxiety because they don't know, right. and, and it's yeah. better just to give them the answer, right, um, than to yeah. kind of pull it out of them. That's definitely been 
been a challenge, I think, in these classes. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, throughout several semesters did tweak, you know, like we mentioned, the handouts and the vocabulary list. Um, I think originally we had a circulation desk, yeah. at, which is one that we pulled off of a corpus of library terms, but um, we don't call it the circulation mm -hmm. desk, we call it the service desk. Um, so, so making sure that our jargon matched the jargon on the sheet was something that we kind of continually have to do mm -hmm. to make sure that everything that we're saying is still the same thing that we're calling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know some people call it a reference desk, some people call it a circ desk, some yeah, people call it a service. We call it a service desk. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we we tweaked it, yeah, to to account for our own library's jargon as well. Um, let me see. Um, there is, you know, some, um, you know, like I said, cultural barriers too. Um, you know, some cultures don't, they, they don't speak in class and so they don't want to speak mm -hmm. in class. Now, hopefully by the time that they've come to us, they're a little more used to the way that, especially um, a couple of the instructors make the students, um, you know, speak and engage with the class. But there's always, you know, the ones that the don't couple want, that, yeah, that, just, yeah. that don't want to ask questions in class. And, and again, that's reading your room. Mm -hmm. And so when we circulate, right, when we have them, you know, getting into the databases and things like that um, and filling out some of these sheets, we try to circulate and make sure everybody is um, keeping up, even if they're being quiet. Yes. Yeah. Making sure that they're still on the database page, still working. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they do want help, I think some students are more comfortable asking one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good opportunity for them. If they do want more help, they can kind of, you know, since we're, it'd be a one-on-one -on -one in the classroom, um, that allows them to ask questions if they want to or mm -hmm. without having to talk in front of the whole class. Yeah, we continue to circulate, yeah. circulate and check in with them as they're doing, because they are given, um, some time in class, then you know they get the vocabulary mm -hmm. instruction. They go out into the stacks. Um, they learn how to evaluate sources, and then they have time in class to search through databases, ask questions, evaluate sources in class. Yeah. Um, and then we're there with the instructors to kind of really give them some one-on-one -on -one help if mm -hmm. they need it, or small group help if they need it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I think that that helps to you know create the kind of rapport with the students. That yeah. makes them want to then, you know, come back and hang right. out and, yeah. and come to the cafe and, yeah. and just use the library, you know, mm -hmm. as a resource. However, they they feel fit to use it, however they want to mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's most of what. Yeah. Yeah. This that was our normally it would be an extra like ten or fifteen minutes because yeah. we would have done the activity. The activity. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um. Yeah, if there are questions or anything, um, I've got a list of kind of the research here at the, on this last slide that we um, used when we were kind of informing how we scaffolded this, how yeah. we came up with the with the worksheets, you know, kind of the theory that informed us even starting this, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, and there's some things in there about wait time too, which is actually really fascinating. It really is. Complicated. Yeah, time is, you um, wouldn't think it would be, but it, there's a... Yeah, that, that's one thing. When I saw it on your previous slide, that was the one thing that yeah, I kind of get got what all the other ones when that was something that I was wondering, what exactly does that mean? And yeah, that's not something I would have thought about. When I do a lot of presentations like this online or in person, and I don't, you know, what I'm doing, I'm teaching the librarians to do their job. So I don't have, don't usually have the um, English second as a second language issue, but... I do the typical, I'm going to wait in, in my head count to five. <laughs> a silence until someone to give them a chance to either think through what their answer might be or to, I don't know if guilt is the right word, but <laughs> someone right. will speak up because they don't like the silence kind of thing. Yes, yes. And, and, and that tactic works really well with comp two students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you... If, if someone was sitting there waiting for you to come up with an answer that you didn't have, it just, I mean, I know for me, that would just make me stress feel me out. Very stressed. <laughs> I'm supposed to know this and I don't. And, well, and then that even can carry on the rest of the lesson too. Like they might keep coming back to that and then they're not getting 
all the information that they need because they're so fixated on this one part of class. Mm -hmm. um, right. So the one yeah. part they didn't get or they didn't have the answer for, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which can then that I didn't get that one. Yeah, what did I do wrong? Yeah, mm -hmm. make them reluctant to you know speak up even if they do know the answer. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so we just we we try we try it's like I said it's a tight it's a balancing rope. act yeah. yep. <laughs> could, could call it a razor's edge yeah <laughs> of that and happy it, and like you said it takes the experience from having gone through it and realizing oh this is a problem yeah. right to adjust for it yeah and, and that I mean that the ESL instructors in those classes really helped helped us with that um, mm -hmm. just telling us you know. This is a little bit different than a comp two class. I think some of them have taught comp two and the ESL classes, yeah, they do. and yeah. so having yeah. already is was really very helpful to I think both of us. So that they've experienced the difference between the two groups, mm -hmm. and it makes wow. sense when you say it, right? You know, <laughs> we all get busy, and we all and we're like, oh, it's the, I mean, it's, we're covering some of the same material, right? So we should be the same. Oh yeah. no, it's it's yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, and we have to make sure. I I shouldn't say we, but I know for me, since we do teach so many of the same classes over and over again, you really have to make sure to go into a class with the mindset of completely new class. Like these these kids probably don't know all these words I'm gonna say, um, and starting at the very basic level instead of assuming people do know what you're going to talk about type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's and hard. Just in every class, even when we're so mm -hmm. ingrained into it that we don't realize, I always have to start at, at the at the basics, at the very, yeah. very basics, and then we'll work up into the other, other stuff as we get farther along, yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, um, you know, it can get hard, especially as you get through towards the, the end of the heavy instruction <laughs> season, you know, I mean, you get tired. It's you know? exhausting, yes. <laughs> it yeah. really is. Like I've taught this class five times. <laughs> I've taught this five week. times in three days. So uh yeah, you know, and and sink into a routine yeah. rather than, you know, evaluating your practice in the moment, reading mm -hmm. the room, you know, and, and, and really figuring and meeting those students where they are as opposed to yeah. assuming where they are and trying to have them Come to there. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So if anybody has any questions, please take them into the question section. Any of you out there want to know anything more about what um, Claire and Aaron did or anything you've dealt with at your libraries with any of your uh, non-native English speakers that you're working with? Um, you can also, as you can see, reach out to either one of them with their email addresses there if you do have other questions. Are you switching to something else, or? Oh no, no. I was just trying to figure out if I could see the questions, but I don't know. Oh yeah, you guys can't see that screen, no. So yeah, okay. Right. That you're at, yeah. yeah go to yeah. webinar is very simple. It doesn't have a, like a group chat type thing that we use for this. That's okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, we'll just go back. So a question we do have though, the um, handouts that you used your um, your character sheet and the other ones, did you said you had those available for people or to share or how would you want you us to email those to you or upload them somewhere? We have yeah. um, either way, yeah. If, if you're willing to share them with people, um, we use um, SlideShare to share any sort of documents online. But if you have a place that you guys post things to via UNO that you want me to link to, I can link to that too. It doesn't really matter to me. Wherever is most convenient for you guys. Yeah, we'll okay. set it up right. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll set that up, and um, either we'll email you the documents or we'll make a box link and for. Our, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So yes, then we will have the handouts available for people for you guys if you want to share and um, tweak or use whatever that they did um, in, in their classes. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. We're librarians. We share. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions anybody has about anything? This is great, guys. Um, this is just one of the sessions that did um, jump out at me at conference last year. 
um, it's difficult. I, I now feel bad that I didn't get to it because I can't get to everything. Because um, I would have been really into doing those character sheets, definitely. <laughs> and giving them only, what did you say, like 10 minutes or something? Yeah, that's what we gave them, about 10 minutes yeah. to really try to, you know, they used phones or computers to, uh -huh. like, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If you're really playing any of those games, it takes a lot more than long than that. Let me tell you. It takes oh. a whole evening just to do that part, and then we'll come back next week and actually start playing the game. <laughs> Who's our gamer? She <laughs> yeah. with that activity. Um, which was, I think it's I, nice. It's very creative. And, and also the thing, too, um, it is very specific to if people are into that kind of, you know, tabletop gaming but um using the star wars one i think is good too because that is something that is more um accessible to many people who know and and get star wars oh, but yeah. might not get other type of tabletop games that are not their their um worlds are not as well known right yeah we've kind of mirrored the same situation like it's hard to if you've never been to a foreign country or tried to you know, speak a foreign language and get around in a foreign country right mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. that you know um that feeling that anxiety yeah or that yeah. feel like you should know how to do this like i'm just going to buy lunch meat like i, I should, <laughs> should be, be able to do this yeah. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um and i've but, been in that situation too and it is a little you know you learn the just enough and then something <laughs> happens and it's oh but this is the extra that i don't oh and yeah. It's oh <laughs> yeah. no yeah no. Exactly. So yeah, we were trying to kind of mimic what maybe our students would be feeling mm -hmm. too. It's good um, to identify, be able, be able to identify and experience that. I think. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's come out with any desperate questions while I've been chatting here. So I think we'll wrap up your presentation. Um, All right. That's great. Um, thank you so much. We will have um, the handouts available as you guys asked about. Um, and the slides is too. You can um, either post the slides somewhere and send me that link or um, email me the slides. Yeah, whichever um, works for you guys. We usually put those up with the archive. And we'll have a recording available too. Um, oh, so thank you very much, Erin and Claire. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen now so I can show you where this is all going to be. YouTube. There we go. So you should see now. There it is. So this is the session page for today's show. Um, but if you just go to our Encompass Live main page here, and so far um, on, in the internet world, Encompass Live, our show is the only thing called that online. So you can just use your search engine of choice, Google. <laughs> yeah. And we're the only thing that comes up. Yay. Nobody named anything else. <laughs> Um, so you'll get to our main page here, and you'll see here we've got our upcoming shows, but underneath them, we've got a link to the archives, and this is where today's archive will be. The most recent ones are at the top of the list, so this is last week's show about our One Book, One Nebraska title, This Blessed Earth. Uh, so sometime later this afternoon, as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar cooperate, we'll post it to here. All of you who attended this morning or pre-registered for the show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready, um, and you'll be able to see it here. We'll have a link to the recording, the slides, handouts, wherever um, Aaron and Claire put those as well for you. Um, and while we're here, I'll also let you know, this is our archives for the entire history of Encompass Live. We are actually have 10 years now in on the show. Uh, this is the beginning of the 11th year, 2019. Um, and all of our archives are here. Um, you can see we've got a search feature now here where you can search the entire archive or just the most recent 12 months, if you want something recent. Um, but if we scroll down a bit here, I'll do a quick scroll. You can see here's something 2016. Oh, yeah. um, we, we have everything going back to the beginning of the show, which was January 2009. Oh. So, ah, your lights went out. <laughs> 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 you are a green library, and yeah. if you don't move enough, then the yeah. light shines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was afraid, like, your power was going out or something. <laughs> We're in a room where... It, oh, that was yeah. us just not moving. <laughs> yeah, it was just us sitting it too far away from the motion sensor. <laughs> no problem. So, anyway, our archives here, they do go back to the very beginning of the show, so do keep that in mind when you are looking through them and, and searching for anything. Note the date when it was originally broadcast to make, to, so you can understand um, when, when the context of that show. There will be things on here where the service no longer exists, the links might be broken, um, something's been, in, um, you know, there's new versions of something, and um, so you know, just keep that in mind. But we are librarians, and this is what we do, we archive things. And something yep. like this, we can archive and keep them all out there. So um, 
keep that in mind when you are going through our archives and looking for anything to watch. So that will be for our um, the archive. Uh, next week's show, I hope you join us on sign up for that, will be Tips and Tricks for Internship Success. This is a new one that I just added to the schedule. Uh, we, um, here at the Library Commission, we give out internship grants to libraries, and we've just given, um, announced, we haven't announced them yet, uh, but the libraries have been informed who is getting the internships. So I've got a follow-up press session I'm doing next week, which will be good for anybody who's received an internship grant from us, um, but it's not specific to that. It'll be just anybody who's wanting to do and have an intern or something, some tips and tricks about how you can do that at your library. So um, that will be next week's show. I hope you'll sign up for that one. And any of our other ones we have here on the schedule, you see I've got all February and March filled in here. So see if you want to watch any of those shows, sign up for them. Uh, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. You can see I've got links here. And here's our Facebook page over here. So if you do like to follow up on things on Facebook, give us a like over there and um, you'll be notified of when things are coming up. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, and previously I had a post about our previous shows reminding us of oh, the one coming up. So if you do like to use Facebook, please do give us a like over there for Encompass Live. Um, also, I just want to promote um, another event we have coming up if you'd like to do these online sessions. Big Talk from Small Libraries is our um, annual online one-day conference specifically with speakers and presenters from small and rural libraries, as in population served or if you're a university or school, FTE of 10,000 or less. Uh, registration is currently open. Please do sign up for it. It is on, going to be on Friday, February 22nd. And I am in the middle right now. I've got my folder here of Big Talk. I am evaluating these submissions. Um, like the uh, post, the uh, call for submissions uh, closed last Friday. And we will hopefully have a schedule up for you, uh, hopefully by the end of this week. One thing I can tell you, and I'll go to the schedule here it already, is we will have the Best Small Library in America 2018. Madison County Public Libraries in um, North Carolina was the winner um, awarded that from Library Journal last year, and uh, Shona Bryce from their library will be on the show, on the conference with us to talk about how they got that award. And then we'll be filling all the other ones here, so do keep an eye on that. It also has a Facebook page if you want to like them over there. So that's all my promotion for today, I think. <laughs> all the things. <laughs> So thank you very much, Erin and Claire, for being with us today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.